this time, I'm going to uh, call our fourth meeting of May to order. Um, so for the OPMA, there was a written notice in the official bulletin and also email sent to Brooklyn County Times and the Courier Post. Um, and but we filed a written notice with the clerk of Mount Holly Township. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The board's code of ethics is on your agenda that you could have picked up on your way in, as well as on the school's website. We're going to go straight to presentations. Mrs. DeGanny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Mount Holly Township. Budget for 2023-2024 school year. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. So, for the upcoming school year, we have Budget and fund balance of two million, a uh, projected increase in the local levy of two percent, which is equivalent to about eight point seven million dollars, um, an increase of state aid, about fourteen million in state aid, miscellaneous revenue sixty nine thousand, we're withdrawing two point eight million dollars from our capital reserve account for projects that we're doing this summer, including an elevator at Falwell, Holbein Auditorium rigging, Holbein Auditorium renovation, and then we also have the basketball renovation here at Holbein as well. We have withdrawal from maintenance reserves for some maintenance issues that we have in district, and. Um, of about 3.7 million and those are grants from the federal government and then our debt service uh, debt service is 467,000 and that's from a referendum that was passed about 12 years ago so the total so the total budget for the upcoming school year is approximately 32 million Um, I wanted to share the bank cap. Um, we had 83,000 from three years ago that has expired that the board did not feel a need to utilize. This year, we generated $171,000 in bank cap. Um, that's due to we had an enrollment adjustment an increase in health care costs, which generated 171000 that we will use in future years if necessary. But um, the board decided to carry that over into future years. So next year, the board can use 594000 in bank. This year, um, as you can see, in 2023, the um, Property values in Holly have increased $5.9 million, which is excellent for the taxpayers. So that's fantastic news. And here we have um, the past 10 years of levy history. As you can see, that the board has stayed within or even 
below the 12, the 2% increase, except for the 17, 18 year, um, they had to go above. But for the, besides that, you can see 18, 19, there was no increase. 19, 20, there was. 20, 21, there um, was a minimal increase, and the remainder did get pushed to bank cap, which the board did not utilize. Last year, there was an increase, and then um, this year as well. And so how does this affect the taxpayer in the town of Mount Holly? Assuming that the average assessed home is $174,000, the average taxpayer will pay $108 more this year from last year. And that includes the general fund, which is a 2% of $29, and debt service, which is an increase of 79. These are our projects that I spoke about earlier in the presentation. The elevator, the basketball here at Holbein, the auditorium bringing the auditorium renovation, and then we also have replacing a few items like the rooftop unit and chiller here at Holbein and the mixing valve at Brainerd. Questions? At this time, if the public has any questions, you may ask them. Louis, please stand, state your name, and tell us where you're from. Yeah. Hello, Louis Lopez, uh, 911 Drive, Mount Holly, New Jersey. So there's no increase this year, right? Um, there's a, yes, there is a 2% increase this year. Okay, uh, it's going to be... The, the budget year that we're talking about. Okay. In, in the future budget, it's going to be not have any uh, funding, like according to 23 to 24. You think that... If, uh, like this year, you have funding. What about for next year? Do we have state funding? Yeah. Yes, we do. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I want to make sure. Okay, you're welcome. So I just want to, can I, can I add something to something? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so next year, we have a, I believe it's a million dollar grant from the state at SunTest. So we no longer have those funds. And um, we don't know what's going to happen politically. So we don't know whether or not our state funding is going to go down, stay even, or if we're lucky enough to get extra money like we did this year. So the reason that we did go up, I mean, you notice we did not raise last year. The reason we didn't raise this year is because we're very concerned about losing that million dollars next year and you know, with we get more money from the state. So. Okay, I have one more comment for you, Mike. Um, let me just ask, does anybody else have any questions about the budget? Yes. 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 Is there going to be a more detailed budget breakdown available anywhere for the public to look at? Um, the advertised budget is on the website and it was posted in the newspaper two weeks ago and then within 48 hours the user friendly budget will be posted on the website. You're welcome. Thank you. So do you have something else you want to say? Which is the first train of thought. <laughs> oh, you're like me. I was constantly losing the thought. I'm trying to uh, I'll just look at it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I do it. I do. I just came up. How much funding do you get from Mount Holly Township? From the township or what will that be added funding? From from Mount Holly, right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, we could do that in our general fund. These aren't. Okay, okay. I also want to 
wanted to um, point out, because I know that all of this doesn't make sense to everybody, it was my first maybe three years of IRAs, digging deep and had a hard time understanding. The money that comes out of the um, capital reserve, you just make sure I'm using the right words, Got it. Um, can only be used on big projects like the auditorium. That doesn't affect the day-to-day -day budget, if you will. That's separate money that if we look out and have extra money in the budget, then we can put some of that in capital reserve. But it's like we have a savings account that is meant just for capital projects. So that's why those so taxes aren't going up because we're doing the auditorium. The auditorium is, doing, is being done because our BA <coughs> and her team are so good at making sure we have money in that little savings account. Well done. Anyway, <laughs> set it back. Yeah, yeah, you can only have so much money in them, and then the state's like, well, that money doesn't actually exist. Ms. Banks. Yes. Mrs. Dowd. Yes. Ms. Mashinsky. Yes. Ms. DeFalco. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next presentation is. Uh, I'm actually going to switch the order because uh, oh, uh, Ms. Pierce has a presentation that we're trying to get up on the screen. But um, I would like to introduce to the board uh, TSO. Consulting. Um, so we have Tanya Greenland and Erica Lee here today, and their discussion. And they, they just want to talk to you about the student voice that we have mentioned before. So that starts next week. So uh, they're going to provide you with the framework for that. Um, so without any further ado, I present to you TSO Consulting. I'm going to give you a microphone just because our <laughs> listeners at home. Be able to hear you much better. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm Tanya Breland. I'm Erica Lee, and I also want to introduce um, two of our team members who will be actually doing the work for the student voice. Hi, my name is Douglas Snowman. I'm actually the principal of uh, Thomas Sharp Elementary and College of New Jersey. Prior to that, I was uh, assistant principal at the high school for about 100 years. Work for State Farm Insurance, been there for over 25 years, and uh, actually I've done some volunteer work here at Holy Line, so I've uh, been a mentor for a while. Thank you. So we just wanted to share a little bit um, uh, about what we're going to be doing. Um, so we had an opportunity to meet with the superintendent um, who shared this initiative with us and then we presented a proposal. Um, ultimately, we're looking to um, help students to be able to develop leadership skills and to develop their voice. Um, and that gives them an opportunity to be able to advocate for themselves um, and also to be able to advocate for their peers for um, areas that they see they would like to, where they would like to see change. So that's kind of like the, the, the overarching um, idea about the, the student voice program. But I wanted to give um, Doug a little bit more time to just kind of walk you through uh, what it will look like um, in terms of week to week. The program will be a five week program. Students will meet after school for one hour. And um, in that time, they will have, it will be very interactive for them. Um, they've been selected by the superintendent, and I guess he can share more about uh, that selection process. Um, and then um, as students get together, by the end of the program, um, ideally they should be ready even to propose some ideas for change that they would like to see. And I think it will be a really exciting program for students as they participate in it. But I will um, allow Doug to just kind of share a little bit more specifics about the program uh, with you. Thank you. So... You know, the idea of um, student leadership, um, you know, it's, it's really strikes with me. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, 
as far as the high schools are concerned, the high schools, uh, Lone Bronson, I was there prior to that, prior to uh, Lone Bronson, I was in Lone Brook. In every district, um, there was some type of leadership program that I was involved in as far as the students were concerned. Um, at the high school for Northern Burlington and for Collingswood, it was, we called it the senior leadership program, right? The reason why we had the word leadership is because actually on their transcripts, it helps. It gives them a, an opportunity to speak about the types of leadership types of things that they did in the high school in the community, right? So it was very helpful to have that in the name of the class that they were taking. All right, so I know, I understand that it is for the middle school here, but the bottom line is practice is practice is practice. Anytime you're talking about leadership, we know that um, the opportunity for practice is limited, especially in schools, um, if, if we're not actively trying to create that, right? So the idea of having middle school leaders is huge because it starts them early, and then they go into the high school, you know, with some of these um, jewels as far as, um, you know, the, the types of leadership uh, skills that you need to develop. Um, so with that being said, our, the, the program that, or the training that, we'll, that I'm doing, that we'll be doing, uh, Ms. Jalik and I, you know, it's modeled after a lot of what we've been doing as far as the leadership programs in, you know, the districts that I work with. Um, all right, so there's five sessions. And every week there's a different, um, I, I call it jewels, but it's a, it's a different skill, you know, that students are going to be working with. Um, you know, we're going to be working on trying to create a project that the students are interested in doing, you know, towards the end, something that they have chosen to do for the district, and that may look for their school. That may look like um, something in the school that they've identified that needs work, something within the community that they've identified that needs to be addressed, that they'd like to address. Uh, once again, it's going to come from them as to what it is that they're interested in doing for the school or for the community or something that's important to them. A lot of times students start with um, things that they see, you know, such as bullying or harassment or something like that, which is fine. So what kind of program can we put together, you know, with you in charge or with you, with, you know, at the forefront trying to help, you know, um, assist the building, assist the school, assist the community? Okay, so um, the way it's going to look, um, we're going to have a week one, we're going to start with character. Right, so you have, you know, what's character? What does that look like to you? Why is that important? Um, and so we'll go into some details as far as um, opportunities for them to practice. Um, you know, why you know have strong character matters as far as a leader is concerned. Um, what leaders can you identify? You know, with certain character traits that you're impressed with. Um, so you know, those are conversations that we get to have with the students uh, when they come in. We'll be talking about. Um, We'll, you know, we'll give them an overview as far as the entire uh, five weeks are concerned, but it will be an opportunity to go into practice with certain things. We'll have opportunities for them to uh, take a look at some videos that, you know, um, you know, speak to what character looks like, strong character looks like, what certain leaders, um, you know, what certain leaders have that stands out as far as strong character is concerned. Um, you know, in these uh, training sessions, we'll do things that, uh, let me see. We'll ask them, you know, a lot of different questions about what kind of school do you want, what type of um, um, influence do you want to have, what kind of impact do you want to have in your own building. Um, that's week one. Week two, and then, you know, again, we start off with icebreakers too. You know, it'll be introduction to icebreakers as far as, you know, why is that important. If it's something that we want to, as far as this leadership program, have students work with younger students, then we will work on how that's going to look um, and what that means as far as being able to help, you know, the younger students in your building. As far as week two is concerned, uh, your voice, um, taking personal inventory of, um, of, of what it is that it means to, you know, to have um, integrity, you know, so as far as your voice is concerned, well, again, we'll start off with icebreakers. Um, we have a, a, something that I'm con considering a vent notebook. So with our senior leaders, uh, every time we have a class, they are able to vent and talk. And I say vent, meaning, you know, our senior leaders work with freshmen, you know, as far as helping them transition to the building. Uh, so, but every time we have this class, we have to come in and give them an opportunity to actually talk about what works, what doesn't work. 
It's during that conversation with the advisor that they're able to learn what actually works, what are some of the traits that they put into the, the different types of um, opportunities to work with freshmen, what works, what doesn't work, how can we make it better. Students can also feed into that you know, and give each other you know, an opportunity to, to help um, figure out the things that work and things that don't work. Uh, so with this, we'll be doing you know, the exact same modeling you know, in these training sessions. Students will come in, we'll do icebreakers, we'll talk about you know, how your week was, and then we'll talk about you know, as far as your week was concerned, what are some of the things that you saw in your building that you enjoy, what are some of the things that you want to work on in your building, um, and then we'll talk about things that, you know, interactions with other students, what works, what doesn't work, how we make it better. Week three, um, we're talking about, you know, the true reflection of who you are. Once again, it starts off with icebreakers. icebreakers. We'll do, um, you know, bent notebooks. Um, and, and then that particular, you know, objective, uh, who are you really? Um, and we get a chance to, again, you know, just uncover some things that, you know, the students have an opportunity to talk to each other, talk to us, and we'll help them, um, you know, kind of figure out, you know, once again, as a leader, what it is that you're trying to, you know, accomplish um, and your comfort level as far as being a leader is concerned. Um, the activities that we have are a lot of different, you know, ways for them to practice leadership. Um, every week there'll be activities. There's a lot of ways to different um, goals that we're going to, you know, uh, be setting for them. Uh, they'll have an opportunity to talk about that as well. All right, as far as week four is concerned, um, the goal is leaders develop values and principles um, to live, I'm sorry, leaders develop values and principles um, to live by and set a tone for others. Uh, once again, icebreakers, events, you know, they get a chance, you know, opportunity to talk about what's been going on for the week for them. Um, in today's discussion, you know, they will be talking about, you know, what do you do as far, what is value to you? What is important to you as far as uh, value is concerned? Um, opportunities to talk about um, intolerance within your in, in diversity as far as your building is concerned. We'll give them that. We'll talk about that. Um, and um, what is your line? You know, that's another big one as far as students are concerned. You know, where do you draw your line within your building and what's important to you? So again, it's another opportunity for them to practice, talk, um, understand you know, what their voice is and what it sounds like when they're stepping up and trying to help out within their building and within their community. For that last week, That last week, um, week five, a leader's personal network is his or her emotional fuel. Um, they'll talk about who they have as their network. You know, and as far as a leader, why is that important? Why is it important to have certain people around you? Um, who have you identified that works for you to help you be a stronger uh, individual? Once again, um, leaders have strong people around them, and why is that important? So we get a chance to talk about that. Uh, some of the projects that I've outlined uh, within you know, this particular packet that I have, um, gives them an opportunity to, to think about how they want to, you know, present themselves within their uh, school. So they get to create a documentary if this is something that they're interested in doing, and I get to go into detail as to what that may look like. Uh, but a documentary of who you are, um, and the theme is diversity, tolerance, um, we are one. That's, a, that's just, you know, a different type of project. Um, other projects that I have, um, it's, I, I'll go over it with the students, but, you know, it's, um, we talk about, you know, their social media, um, you know, if this is something that they're interested in doing, why is it important to clean up your social media, you know, you as a leader, does it reflect who you are, you know, as, a, as an individual, um, so take a look at that. Um, these are projects, again, that students really enjoy, but, you know, some of them are like, well, you know, my social media is fine, but I'd much rather pump out more positive messages from my school so that those are things that, you know, we've seen happen. Um, but once again, there's a lot of different things that I have on here as far as ideas are concerned, but uh, that's pretty much what the five weeks will look like. You know, students come in, we do icebreakers, we talk, we talk about the different types of things that make them strong people. The only thing I'll add is, um, so, so Doug's focus is, is a, lot, a lot about the characteristics that make up a good leader. And so where I come in, I do a lot of work with enterprise change management, 
And so everybody loves the concept of transformation, but people really don't like change, right? And so where I'll come in is I'll really kind of help the students identify how they can affect change. So when we talk about advocacy, they have to have these characteristics, but we also need the tools to be able to figure out, well, what's the actual problem? Let me not attack the person. Let me figure out what the problem is, and let me see how we can go about it in a constructive way to bring about change. And so as we talk about these characteristics and we talk about these traits and what's important, we'll connect that to, okay, now how can we actually take some action? You know, is it skill versus will? Do we have the ability to do this, or do we have the desire to do this? And does the district have the ability to do this, or do they have the desire to do this? And then we can, uh, uh, you know, develop our approach based on that. So um, hopefully by the end of this, it's only five weeks, and they're in middle school, um, so we have to, you know, manage our expectations. But our goal is to kind of plant some seeds so that they can become better leaders and be better advocates for themselves and their peers so they can be changed in their, in their local community. The only thing I'll add is how excited we are about this. Um, super excited. Um, CISO Consulting, we do a lot of work in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. And we work a lot with leadership and staff. And we are super excited about the opportunity to work with students because very often when we talk about systems change, um, we very often miss them. And so we're really excited about the opportunity for them to really discover their voice and their sense of agency and advocacy. So we'll end there and see if there are any questions. Um, what is, two questions, I missed it, I apologize. What is the grade band that you're going to um, have here in the school and is there a cap limit that Seventh and eighth grade, and we believe there will be no more than twenty students. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> my question is more around the selection process. Will they nominate for the for it? Is the nominator? Yeah. So uh, this goes back uh, before spring break. I sent out a uh, Google form in their Google Classroom, and it was almost like an application to apply for it. I, I first spoke to. Um, seventh and eighth graders in, in an assembly, told them that about the opportunity, and then I provided the form for them to sign up. Uh, so this Friday, I'm going to go into the cafeteria, and I'm going to recruit some more people. But, um, you know, the, the overall all goal here was to get students involved, right? And, like, you know, you have uh, your, your students that are in National Junior Honor Society, they're involved. You have your athletes, they're involved. And a lot of times students lose their voice because of what group they are in. So this is an opportunity for them to, um, you know, have an opportunity to lead, right? So uh, I chose seventh and eighth grade uh, strategically because uh, our eighth graders are able to articulate, especially as they're walking out the door, they have a lot to say. Um, and then our seventh graders will be able to be next year. So talking about like giving back and, and being able to pass the torch. So I hope that this is something that we can continue every single year. We are late in the game this year, but you know, th things happen. Um, but I'm super excited because I feel like, um, like, like Erica said, like students lose their voice in school. We don't do that intentionally, but it happens. And we need to be able to listen to them and provide opportunities for them to say stuff to us. Because if they don't get the opportunity to verbalize, they are going to let you know through their behavior and their actions. So um, I'm hoping that this is something that will spread throughout the, the, the student body and people get excited for it because I'm excited for it. And I just want to add to that 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 will spread once they see at the high school, the students get really into it. At this point, you know, we've done this several years, um, and our senior leaders are very visible. They're out, they're in a lot of different things, right? Um, the application process is an interview process. You know, we did that, once again, just for experience. They actually come and dressed up, uh, they've completed the application, and they come and dressed up, and they get interviewed. Why do you want to do this? Why? So that's something that the kids talk about. You know, everything that they do, they talk about. Um, they're excited about the opportunity to, you know, to interview. Once they get in and then they're doing the different activities throughout the district, 
again, it's talked about. They tweet it out. They now we tweet, but they Instagram. You know, so it's those types of things. It's out there, and they continuously put it out there. It is an exciting. It's exciting because students have an opportunity to express themselves, find their voice. We call it find their voice, but it's you know they're they're expressing themselves. They're talking about what's important to them. And in leadership programs, once again, you know it's something that we as school districts need to do better. Give you know kids more opportunities to get into leadership roles and practice those young budding skills. You know you're not going to be perfect the first time, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. And that was the whole point in putting something together to begin with. You know as far as our schools were concerned, give these kids an opportunity, a format, a vehicle to practice being a leader. You know, and then give them opportunity to talk about what worked and what didn't work. That's the whole point of these event sessions. I want to vent on a regular basis about what works in my building and what doesn't. But who am I venting to? Who am I talking to? Well, I'm talking to other colleagues, right? So that's what this is. It gives them an opportunity to do that. It is very exciting, you know, and I, every year, um, students are talking about what's coming next as far as the senior leadership program. So as far as your middle school leadership program, it'll catch fire. You know, kids will want to be in it. Um, a very big important part is just making sure you have the right person on board to, to push it. You know, that's who you have on the boat, right? Like, who is going to be the one to help put this together and keep it going? That'll make it really, you know, work too. So, good luck with that. That's amazing. <laughs> have more of a voice. We've had our whole line um, student uh, president, vice president, come sit with us and our Caldwell student vice president of the student body come and sit at this table and tell us what's going on in school and everything. But last year, the state pushed a policy that every high school now has to have a member of the student body on their board. I want to know what they're thinking. I want to know what their thoughts on, on the different things that we're deciding on are. So this feels like a great jumping off point yeah, to hear what they're thinking. So I really, I'm so excited for what this is great. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, next we have um, Mrs. Pierce. She is our Director of Special Education, and she's going to give you an update on Care Solace. Uh, you know, we adopted Care Solace in our district uh, during the, the, the pandemic, and she has uh, some wonderful news for you. So we use some of our ESSER uh, grant funds to um, bring Care Solace into our district. Uh, so Care Solace is an organization um, that is national. Um, the purpose of Care Solace is really to help connect people with mental health services easier and more directly. I don't know if anybody has experience with attempting to get mental health services by yourself. Um, it's chaotic. Like my experience has been going on my insurance's website and looking at the litany of people who are approved and doing my best guess and being sending 20 emails and being like, I wonder if somebody's gonna, you know, email me back ever. Um, so I actually use Care Solace for a member of my household um, as well. Like 70% because we needed it and 30% going through Care Solace for like market research. Um, and it was extremely efficient and easy. Like within a week, I had an appointment set up for the member of my family with that person, which is just like a huge difference from trying to navigate that on my own. Um, so right now, um, the slide showed you like there's about 300 schools in the country using Care Solace, um, over 3 million students. And um, it's available to any household member of any student in Mount Holly, right? So if you have a student in Mount Holly and a sibling who doesn't go to Mount Holly needs services, you can go through Care Solace to get services for 
um, that family member. Um, so that's a great addition to it um, being, you know, for our students, but also for our families and community members. Um, so there is a few different ways that you can go about getting services. One is to search yourself, um, and there is a link on our website to the Mount Holly um, information page. So put in some information, and you'll, you know, identify why you're looking for services, um, and then it will get handed off to um, a person working for Carousels who's called a care companion. Um, you can designate your um, language of preference, and so somebody fluent in that language will be the person that reaches out to you. Um, they'll reach out to you by phone, they will send you a text message, and they'll also send you an email. Sometimes that email goes to junk mail, so if you don't get something within about 24 hours, check there. Um, and then they will um, identify agencies or organizations in the proximity that you give them, so if you give them a 25 mile radius versus a five mile radius, like they'll work with, look within the parameters that you give them. And they will very quickly identify agencies who have availability to support you or whomever um, has that need, talk to you about your preferences and a provider and help set up an appointment. Um, the other way that you can get connected with a care companion and go through that whole process is by somebody in the school district um, initiating what's called a warm handoff on your behalf. Um, so if you want to initiate services but aren't really sure how, all of the um, administrators in the district, central office and school-based, all of our school counselors um, and our school social workers and school psychologists all have accounts to initiate warm handoffs. You can contact any of them and request one, and they'll just go through those preliminary questions with you to make sure that you get connected with the right person. I asked you to click right as you were talking. My apologies. Um, this slide just kind of shows the chaos that is navigating mental health services and why Care Solids makes that so much easier. Um, so go, to, go ahead to go to the next slide. So we're going to talk about our district data. Um, Care Solids tracks their key performance indicators. I'm not going to go through every single number on this list. I'll point out a couple highlights, right? So 48% um, of the cases that um, start with either warm handoffs or self-referrals are resulting in appointments into care, um, which is a pretty amazing number. In talking to care solace, the um, average percent for a district of our size is about 25 to 30%. Um, so I think it's great that the people who are reaching out like really want to um, work through that process. Um, I think it also uh, is a credit to our staff members, primarily our school-based um, counselors, school psychologists, and school social workers, because they can see where people are in the process. They don't get all the nitty-gritty, but they can see, like, have you been contacted? Are you not reaching out, right? And they can then follow up with those people who are interested to make sure that they know somebody's trying to reach out and, and help bridge that connection. Um, one other metric that I thought was really alarming, um, in a good way, is that, um, the care solace has helped save our district staff about 2,600 modes of communication over the course of the year in setting all of this up, right? And they equated that to um, about 72 total hours. So if we think about somebody having a full-time job, right, that's about two full weeks of that person only helping navigate and connect people with mental health services and following up. Um, so that is time that has gone back to our district staff to be able to reallocate for like supporting students on the ground or other things that they may be tasked with. Can go to the next slide. Here's some demographics in terms of who is accessing our services. So you see um, gender, age, and ethnicity are at the top. Um, and then at the bottom, it just talks about the community needs. Um, so it. Care Solace helps connect for both substance use um, and treatment as well as mental health. So these are just what came up in the searches um, and referrals for services um, from both our you know, community at large as well as any referrals that we would have made. And then this, um, I believe this is the final slide, shows us the um, top 10 insurances that people are using. This helps Care Solace to assess their providers to know if they have enough providers like meeting the insurance needs and whether or not they need to continue to like build their bank of folks. Um, 
and then on the right you see the top 10 providers to which people have um, been referred and um, started services or supports with those folks. This is posted on the website, so if you are, you know, wanting to look from home, this is the information you can use to do so. Um, and are there any questions about Carousel and our district? Right. <laughs> uh, one thing that I would add is, um, you know, it's always cool to see like something happen over time and how it evolves. Like I, I remember us being in the auditorium and we had um, a presentation that was like day zero. Um, but to see how many people are using this um, is is pretty uh, fascinating to see. I would say the next level of this would be to get this in the hands of people that um, are not using it but need it. Um, and you can see, like, uh, we can put, post, post this on our website and the board, I can email this presentation to you. But you can see certain demographics that, that we need to target because um, when you look at our discipline data, uh, you can tell pockets of students that um, may be suffering from some of those um, anxiety, depression, those are the top two. Um, so it, it's, it's important to continue to, to provide those opportunities. And then I would say another part of this, another level would be to be able to have people on our staff that can follow up, you know? Um, so we have in our budget, you know, we're going to explore like hiring more social workers that can work that aren't affiliated with the child study team because uh, they are definitely overworked to be able to follow up with some of these uh, cases. But we need people that will be able to follow up and work with families. Um, and I think that that will broaden this uh, impact a, a lot, a huge impact will be able to uh, happen if we can have people that follow up. So um, just, you know, some of the grants that you see coming up in the next month or so, uh, they will help with that as well. So um, I just know that as a district, we all recognize the importance of mental health uh, more than even, you know, going through the pandemic as we were going through it. But now I can tell you that uh, it's evident that mental health is important. <laughs> And I tell the message from administration to our staff is that's priority. That's number one. Because if you don't have a regulated um, environment where students feel safe and they feel like they can take academic risks, um, those settings are, are important to have, right? So if you don't have that, then that's when the low achievement comes. So. Our push is to make sure that our environment is conducive to optimal learning so we can see some progress with our student achievement. Um, so over, overarching, I say that my motto now is we're going to build this from the inside out. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment on agenda items only. Well, this is open file 9105 about the program in any language, right? Or any language in the world. And second is what they say about bullying. I was looking at the list. I don't see anything about bullying. So, 
mean, obviously, if you didn't see that data on there, then people didn't go to, I mean, they don't express, like, what happens in a session. Um, so that wasn't one of the, the uh, categories that were in there. So. Okay, thank you. have a motion to adopt the minutes from April 26th and the April 26th executive session. ISS 01, OP 01 through OP 09, and BA 01 through BA 21. general public session. Um, public participation shall be governed by the following rules. The participant <coughs> must be recognized by the presiding officer, that's me, and must provide an announcement of his or her name, place of residence, and group affiliation if appropriate. The presiding officer may limit each statement made by each participant to a specific duration limit of nine to the presiding officer or question board members individually. Hello. Lewis Lopez, 911 Squad. I just wanted to know what's the status of the ESL program. How that goes? The ESL program? Yeah, the, the, the program yeah. that uh, you guys were speaking Spanish to English. Yeah. How that program goes this year? Well, it, 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 I mean, it's the same thing as every year. We have kids that come in. Um, actually, I don't have numbers of who will move out. Um, so we can do that in the summertime. We can make sure that uh, we can uh, post the data of how many students, students move out. Um, but an exciting thing that is coming down the road for the life of me right now, I can't think of what date it is. But it's in the next, I think it's um, May 15th. We're going to have a um, uh, English as a second language um, day where, where parents can come in. It's going to be completely in Spanish for those parents that don't speak English. Um, and we're going to have a lot of people come in just to talk about some of the services that are available to them. So uh, we try to do as much as we can for the ESL population. I'd also like to add that our, I think I believe our top two um, other languages besides English are Portuguese and Spanish, right? So we have a STEM fair on May 17th, which is going to be awesome, in this building from 6 to 9, I believe. And displays and everything will be both English and Spanish. And 
and there will be a Hispanic Heritage table in the main room. I appreciate it. Uh, second is, what if the student want to learn, uh, let's say, want to learn a different language? They say, okay, I'm Spanish. I want to know, uh, you know, what's the difference between the Spanish from America and the Spanish from Barcelona and Spain? Do you, so, do you uh, our world language here in the middle school is uh, Spanish. Uh, they talk about different, you know, uh, Latin countries, Hispanic countries, Hispanic heritage. Um, I don't think that they go into different dialects because it's hard enough for them to pick up just the basics. Um, so that's that's how we handle that. And second grade, so I want to thank to the uh, what, 32 parents that came quite to me and thanked to me about the last uh, the last DOE meeting. They appreciate it. They had some closure. But I still have one final question. I would like to ask the both. Can leader the butter can go with me, you know, to the next PO meeting with no problem. She can come to any meeting. Oh no, I'm just asking. We have invited her. Oh, okay. I just, I, uh, like I said, it, it does help. But, but, you know, I'll be cool just to let what's going on. I'm just a journalist to study and love Brown County, love about the, my high school. We love, I don't go to school this one, but I came from Atlantic City. Went straight to to high school. But my brother did everything did right. Went to here and I live right now Charlie Street. And I appreciate everything. You know, his mother's our appreciation teacher. I appreciate every teacher at this school for everything. And I hope my videos are in addition to the video we spread the news. Yes, we appreciate it. Thank you Lewis. And uh one final are oh, you gonna have a sack or a memory sack? For uh, our student that uh, you know departed. I don't think that we've discussed it. I know that they did have a section where a lot of kids brought in flowers and stuffed animals, and they um, they could have her help her. Yeah, so uh, we we are going to acknowledge her in the yearbook. Uh, we did have a moment where students did have a memorial for uh, Felicia. Uh, you know, we had to put a time frame on that because we just had to make sure that. The emotional health of, of all the students involved uh, had a time to process, um, but uh, there will be something in the in the yearbook, and I believe that they did something for the second day of the play. I went to the first day. They did it the first day too. Okay. I must have came late. <laughs> um, so they 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 have honored her in, in certain certain. One last question: What happened to the uh, to the band? Would that be off limit, uh, off limit, or just the, what? the, the bathroom? The bathroom? No, the bathroom. The you know that we see it was found. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. It we, wouldn't, be, we wouldn't do a memorial there. No, 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 no. I mean, are you gonna put off limit? I mean, or don't no, be any hunting, nothing like that. It's open. Okay, thank. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm going to give a shameless plug for our this month. For our STEAM fair on 17th at 6 o'clock in this building, there will be robotics, there will be the, um, the Middle School <coughs> Society, which is not the club, middle school. They are putting on, thank you for all the welcomes, they are putting on a piece of the play, so everybody can watch that. The um, percussion is going to be in the music room. And play on the drum 
so that's super fun. The science fair will be there. There are so many activities and things to come out and see. Please, everyone, come. Come see what these students have been doing. It's amazing. And pizza. And pizza and free pizza. <laughs>